Hi, and welcome back. This is Penny Sansevieri and Miss Amy Cornell with the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. We have a name for the show. I'm so <laughs> excited. Get it. We started off three shows without a name, and we finally have a name, and I'm really, really excited to be here. Amy, welcome back. Thank you so much. So um, I know we were, we're not necessarily capping this at four shows. We were doing four shows just to kind of get started and to kind of start the momentum for the podcast. So we're going to be doing more shows um, in future, and probably a lot of them will focus on Amazon and other little tips and tricks and hints to get, you know, to get more visibility on that site because it is one of the, you know, it is the biggest uh, store for those of you who are not selling on Amazon. You definitely want to get your book. I talked to an author the other day and he said to me, he said, you know, I really want to try and see how many books I can sell outside of Amazon. I said, well, I, I'm not to be like the buzzkill on your day, but probably not a lot. So um, Amazon is your, your, you know, Amazon's a major sales tool. And one of the things that I wanted to chat about today, because you and I feel so passionately about this, and also because you do a lot of book page evaluations, is that authors, so it, so it's one thing to say, oh, I'm selling my book on Amazon and my book is up on Amazon and great, I'm super excited, I'm an author, I'm launched my book. But a lot of times that's kind of where it stops, right? So they authors put their book up there and then they add a book description and then they kind of wait and see what happens. I mean, oh. you, you do evaluations. I mean, you see that a lot, right? Yes. The, the, I want to wait and see is just like, I hate to say it, the kiss of death. You know, as soon as you've resigned yourself to waiting for anything for your book, I think it's going to start going downhill. Yeah. Dramatically. That's, yeah, that's very true. And here is something, because I'm getting ready to write a blog post on this. And depending on the timing of when the podcast um, launches, the, the, the post, the blog post may already be live. But um, one of the things that I've been discovering as I've continued to do my nerd research on Amazon is that everything matters. So there isn't a single thing that you can do on Amazon that literally does not matter. Every single thing that you do matters. That's and so this, true. But, but Amy, you know what, this goes beyond obsessing over a bad review, right? Honestly, a bad review, which I know is where a lot of author focus goes when you talk about your Amazon book page. Well, my Amazon book page is great, but I have this one review and it's a one star and it's really upsetting. That is like the least of your worries. Um, even though having- 100%. One, but you know what I mean? I mean, having a one star review is obviously not good. Like I'm not saying that that's like a great thing, but that's usually where- the obsession kind of starts and, and ends. Do you find that too? Oh yeah. A lot of times, like you focus on one thing and it's all encompassing and you ignore all the other pieces that are really going to end up overshadowing, you know, that one tiny element that you feel is the end of the world. When you have everything else working to your advantage, it becomes less of a big deal. All of those little hiccups, not great reviews, whatnot, they get buried by all this other good stuff you have going on. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about that good stuff. And just so y'all know, in the show notes, we're going to have a list of some of our favorite versus least favorite um, Amazon pages, or, or let's put it this way, book pages that are just hitting it, um, hitting it out of the park versus book pages that could maybe use a little bit of work so that you get a sort of a sense of what we're talking about. Amy, uh, and I'm, I'm going to totally put you on the spot right now. What would you say is the, mm. your top pet peeve when you do book page evaluations? Like, what's the one thing where you're like, oh, I don't know how people can keep forgetting this? I would say, and the one that stands out, and the reason I'm choosing this one is because it's something that is immediately evident as soon as you open that book's page. Like before, you know what I mean? You just catch it with your eye, is when you see either a massive, long, ongoing block of text and then you know kind of the other extreme of that like a two sentence description oh yeah you know both of those i i'll be like very different kind of fall into the same category is that it immediately catches your eye that either this is really long ongoing potentially boring read or i don't even have enough information here to make a decision i will move on to the next book you know yeah, yeah. 
And I, I think because those stand out so much before anybody even, you know what I mean? Like you catch that with your eye, even as you're looking at the cover, even before you finish reading the subtitle, you know what I mean? That just stands out so much. Your, yeah. your book description length. Yeah, absolutely. And here's another thing. And you and I, cause I sent you this yesterday in, um, I forwarded this over to you yesterday. I was preparing for a class I'm teaching tomorrow and I was evaluating book pages and I stumbled on this book cover and I think that, I think this author had a book bub deal or maybe it was a, um, a Kindle nation daily deal or something in any, in any event, I spotted this book cover and I was like, Oh my God, this cover was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I go to the author's book page and it says, so the subtitle says, a psychological thriller to keep you at the edge of your seat, which is technically a typo. So, right. cause it's, I looked it up cause I'm not the best, like I'm not, I'm not the best at grammar, but I looked it up and it is, it's on the edge of your seat. So watch out for typos. Cause I see that surprisingly, I see that a lot. Yeah, those little things. And, you know, even if you want to sit here and argue, if somebody wants to say, well, technically it's not wrong, but it's also not right. And what you're doing is you're making the person that's potentially going to buy your book think about something ridiculous and stupid that has nothing to do with the actual quality of your book's story, you know, or the content. Because even right. you and I were sitting there talking about like, well, that can't be right. That doesn't sound right. I know that's certainly not the norm. Like maybe some people, but. Either way, now we are having this entire conversation that's essentially negative about this book for yeah. one little tiny slip up. And that's yeah. the last thing you want people to start doing is to get distracted by something else that's not buying your book, you know? Right, right, exactly. Because if some, and this is, this is part of the issue with Amazon book pages is that if you stop a person's experience, so if they have gone from the search page and they've actually landed on your page, um, and you interrupt their, their buying experience by making them, you know, by, by distracting them with a typo or something that doesn't seem quite right. That's like, you know, color with a U versus color without a U. Both are technically right, depending on where you live. Um, but color with a U is distracting because that's not how we spell color. So right. it's kind of, it's kind of sort of the same thing at and on the edge of your seat may both be acceptable, but to the mind, you're going to, whatever doesn't feel intuitively right mm -hmm. is going to stop your experience. And there goes your sale. 100%. You know, um, the other thing that I see that it, one thing that, that really kind of, um, bugs me about authors is that, um, for book pages specifically is that a lot of times I see folks burying the lead. So in other words, they have awards or they got a great review or they have something and you don't know about this award or this review until later on in the book description Yes, or, or further down the page. And so I've had authors tell me, and I've had a couple of authors tell me the reason why they do it is because they don't want to, you know, circumvent the book description. Like they feel like the book description should be front and center. Absolutely. Your book description is extremely important, but remember eye candy. People like what other people like. So even if you don't know who Book Life magazine is or Indie Reader is or whatever award is that you won, readers like to see that. They like to see this as an award-winning book. Wow. Oh, yeah. You and know? there's so few and far between. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, maybe people lose track of, you know, like, don't be so humble. Like, if you have anything to brag about, brag about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that it is a, um, we, if you're, and part of the reason why we wanted to take the time during this podcast to sort of, to address the Amazon book page is yes, it is the primary place you're selling your book, but it's also such an overlooked, it's such an overlooked element. And if everything else that you're doing is driving people to your book page, which hopefully it is, mm -hmm. Um, you're waste, you're losing your money. You're wasting an opportunity. I can tell you almost without question, if I get on the phone with an author and they say, and I ask them, you know, what are you doing for marketing? They say, well, I'm running some Facebook ads, but my Facebook ads aren't really doing well. And like, they're like, well, it seems like I'm getting clicks, but I'm not getting any buys. 
I can almost guarantee you it's probably not the ad copy on your Facebook ads. It's probably your, the web, your book page. Yes. That last point of conversion. That last point of conversion. Yeah. And you know, some things that I think, um, you know, authors are, one of the things that I really like about the book pages is that you can get into the back end of Amazon Author Central and expand the heck out of your Amazon book page. I mean, like my truckload page for my Amazon truckload book, I went in there and added um, the table of contents to the, to the back of the page. Yep. Um, and the idea behind it is to grab as, you know, Amazon has a lot of stuff on, cause obviously, you know, it's their website. If they want to put the latest Jack Ryan thriller ad up on your book page, <laughs> they're entitled to do that, right? But you're also entitled to grab as much space back from that page as you possibly can. So adding more reviews, adding an interview with the author, five things about me you didn't know. One of our most favorite authors who, um, Stephen Ramirez, I think we've talked about his books before, he writes the Sarah Green Mysteries. He is just so good. This guy hits it out of the park all the time. And this guy did, and I don't know if it's on all of his pages, but he has five things about me you didn't know. And I thought that was just the cutest idea, right? Um, oh, it's so clever. It's so clever because now you're getting to know the author. And one of the other things that, one of the other things that we talk about a lot is really get personal with your reader. I mean, not, you know, obviously privacy issues, yada, yada, like we get it, but, you know, share personal details of your life. Like what made you want to write the book? Something that is not too personal, but yet does give the reader some insight into who you are. Um, those kinds of like, what are your hobbies outside of writing books? And those kinds of things um, really put you, put your reader in touch with you, which also helps to make a sale. Oh yeah. It's an extension. Your Amazon book page is 100% an extension of your brand and who you are. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you have to do something other than what everybody else is doing. And really the only way to do that now with as many books as there are out there is by getting personal, you know? And like yeah. you said, you don't have to tell them what you had for breakfast, but you know, the only way to really be your own brand and stand out is to be unique which means you really have to dig into what sets you apart and what makes you unique and what makes you who you are and what motivates you because nobody else is going to be able to copy that. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And those are the things that, you know, authors are oftentimes, you know, they're introverts. It's hard to, sometimes it's hard to get out there. Maybe they don't like doing events. They just want to keep writing and I get all of that. I completely understand that. But your Amazon book page is something that you can, to some degree, set it and forget it, right? You can, you can do all of this stuff and make all these changes. And you don't have to keep modifying your page every single week. Um, but it is good to get in there and just make sure that you're expanding it. What other tips, Amy, do you have for authors? Like, what are the, some of the other things that authors overlook? I would say the, um, you know, you, you brought this up earlier with another example, um, yeah. not taking advantage of being able to use a subtitle. And I think, yeah. I think a lot of authors still assume that it has to go on their cover or they can't use it or that the subtitle that they enter in for Amazon has to be what they already put on their cover which is really not the case. A lot of times, you know, we see a lot of authors that they get the subtitle on the cover penny and this happens all the time. The book looks great. The cover looks great blown up on your screen or in print in your hands. But then once it gets down to that tiny thumbnail on Amazon, you lose the subtitle anyway. Nobody can read that, especially if you're talking about mobile, you know, if anybody's right. shopping on their mobile phone. So I would say not taking advantage of being able to not only choose a subtitle that is really intriguing and draws people in, but also testing different versions. You know, there's nothing that locks you into a subtitle on that page, you know. So I think that you can really, um, it's a really great opportunity to kind of respond to what's going on in your genre and to the feedback you're getting on positive reviews 
in kind of incorporating those terms that people are using about your book and get those into your subtitle to draw more like-minded individuals and likely buyers in. I think when authors do that, it's really, really smart and very clever. And it is something that you can keep rolling with and keep testing. Um, I love the use of a subtitle. Uh, it's really sad when we see nothing up there. It's like, oh, you know. Yeah. Like, um, so we do a lot of work with the clients that, uh, with our clients with subtitles, and we give them a lot of different ideas to kind of get those creative juices flowing. And again, it's really great to use reviewer feedback for a lot of that too. Because once you start getting more reviews, you'll start to see patterns in what people, positive things people are saying about your book. And as you say all the time, people like what other people like. So incorporating, you know, those kind of positive phrases and, and terms and buzzwords that reviewers are using is just really, really smart marketing. Now, I think that is actually a really, really smart idea because if you're listening to this podcast and you're kind of struggling, you're like, well, okay, but I think my copy is good enough. I'm not sure if it's good enough take a look at some of the reviews, take a look at what some of the, re the reviews are saying on about your book and see if you can incorporate some of those buzzwords, Amy, as you were saying, I think that's really, really, really smart because you will start to see patterns. You will start to see people saying things over and over again. And at some point it's a head slapper, right? You're like, Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that before? It's that's such an obvious, um, you know, that's such an obvious thing that I could say about my book. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I think it gets hard to put yourself in reviewers' shoes and be that objective about your own work. So really, you know, like you're saying, using those reviews to your advantage to kind of, again, put yourself in their shoes. How, are, how is your book being viewed from the outside? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, there's, there's no reason that if you get, if you're, you know, if you haven't gotten so if you want to pepper your book page with some advanced reviews and you haven't really gotten advanced reviews, you're just dealing with, um, you know, you're, you've got reviews of your book on Amazon and maybe you've got some bloggers that did some reviews. There's no reason that you can't excerpt those and put them ahead of your book description in bold. So again, it's a quick little quote from a reviewer. Um, and it's a lead in to your book description and it already sets the pay, sets the, sets the table for people saying, Oh, this is potentially a book I'm going to like this reviewer liked it. They don't necessarily have to know the reviewer or the publication for that, you know, for the, for the book description to start vibing with the reader, if that makes sense. Exactly. And I think a lot of authors forget to check Goodreads for reviews too, Penny. Oh, and, that's a great idea. You know, yeah. In the crossover, because Goodreads really, you know, is about, lovers of different genres and topics kind of coming together and getting hyper-focused on what they're interested in. And yeah. so their feedback's really good too, because you're really not going to, you know, you don't see it as much on Goodreads where you will just trying to garner reviews in general from the general population. But Goodreads, if that person has read your book, it's pretty likely that they're kind of a hardcore fan of the genre you write in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, I would really take what they say seriously, take it to heart. You know, if anybody has constructive criticism, use that too, you know, but anything especially positive said on Goodreads, move that over. Let people know that this is a review that you have on Goodreads. Like it definitely, it has some legs. It carries some weight. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's, that's, a, that's a really, really, that is a really good idea. Goodreads, because it isn't, even though Amazon owns Goodreads, the reviews don't trickle over onto your Amazon page. So that's a really, really good idea. Um, and I want to kind of leave you with this, which is such a great opening line. Um, and I'm going to just give a shout out to Steve Ramirez again, just because I think he's, he is an independently published author and he's just doing so many things, right? The first line of his book description is when you look in a mirror and see a ghost, that's a bad day. Don't you love that? I love that. And to me, like that immediately, I'm like, oh, I want to read this book. And then that's so that's the that's essentially the log line or the tagline whatever you want to call it and then he goes into the book description and mm -hmm. at that point if that log line has captured your attention you are going to continue to read and you're probably going to hit that that buy now button and you're going to get that book and you're going to read it so everything matters on amazon it absolutely all makes a difference and in future podcasts we definitely want to talk about the also bots on amazon because those are also important um, some things that we've discovered in terms of 
Amazon ads and how they help with your optimization. We'll talk a little bit more about optimization in future podcasts. But Amy, thank you so much for joining me today and for all of your terrific insight into this. Oh, yes. I'm excited. I'll be, we'll be putting up lots of notes. So I hope everybody checks those out so they can actually get a visual with what we've been saying too. It's really helpful. Yeah. We're going to list out a few, um, actually several, about a, about a half a dozen um, uh, author pages that are good and some that could use work. And of course, uh, our, our dear and most awesome indie author, Steve Ramirez, will be part of that. And you can take a look and see what this guy is doing. He's really hitting it out of the park as are um, many of the other authors that we're going to talk about in our show notes. So thank you so much for being part of this podcast. This is Penny Sansevieri and Amy Cornell. And thank you for, uh, thank you for joining the show and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.